Just type in the host name there, dwtm.trainwise.local, click OK, and that's it, it's set up. Okay, finally we'll create the two users, T1 and T2. Go to Admin Tools, Active Directory, Users and Computers. Uh, when the window opens, goes in, go into User Accounts and right click in the white space down here and select New User and the User Dialog box will pop up. Put in Trainee1, Trainee2 and then in the User Login name T1 at trainwise.local. Uh, so our user is T1, click Next, type in a password, uh, password of your choice, deselect the user must change password at next logon, click Next, oops, not complex enough, okay, type it in again, try again, once that's done, click Next, and we have our user. Now do the same thing again for trainee, one, or trainee 2 or T2. From your Exchange Server installation folder, type in setup.com space forward slash prepare AD space forward slash ON for organization name, uh, colon, and then your organization name. In our case, it's Trainwise. First part of the process will be relatively quick. The second part, to get completed on the second part, will take a little bit longer, maybe five or ten minutes. Step two, set up and configure Exchange. Okay, great, we're ready to set up Exchange Server now. Double click on the setup exe file. Once we've done that, notice that the install uh, steps, the first three are greyed out, .NET Framework, MMC Console and the PowerShell is greyed out. It's already installed so we don't need to do that because we did that previously. So now install, uh, click on step four, install Microsoft Exchange Server 2007 SP1. That'll run through a little bit of a process. Follow the prompts, agree to the agreement, uh, no to feedback or yes if you like. Typical Exchange Server installation, click next. Type in your organization name. You shouldn't have to do that since we did it at Prep AD, but that's okay, do it anyway. Click Next. Uh, if you have Outlook 2003 prior or Entourage and you want to um, work with that as well, then select Yes, No if you don't. Click Next. It'll run through a little bit of a process and check things. At this point, it'll tell you that it's a 32-bit version. It's not supported. That's fine. That's okay. Just let that run. It'll take about 17 minutes from this point to install, 17 to 20 minutes, depending on the power of the machine. And then you should end up, <clears throat> excuse me, with uh, a list of beautiful green ticks. Click finish from there. You've probably just rebooted, so open Exchange Server Management Console, and we'll have a quick look at that. There's three sections in the console. There's Organization Configuration, Server Configuration, and Recipient Configuration. We'll be looking at the three of those and configuring them. First thing we'll do in the Exchange Management Console is set up... Um, in the organization configuration client access, we'll set up the Exchange Active Sync mailbox policy. So double click on default, uh, select allow non provisional devices, and then click OK. That'll allow us to use our phone. Then go down to Hub Transport. There's three tabs in here we'll configure. Firstly, accepted domains. Notice we've got trainwise.local. So right click in the window, select new accepted domains, uh, give it a name, uh, we'll call it trainwise.com and accepted domain is trainwise.com. Leaves authoritative domain and click on next, click finish, nice green tick there. And you can see there that the domain has been popped there in, into the list. Uh, next thing is the send connector. Just right over here on the right hand side, click new send connector. Uh, type in a name, we'll call it Outbound, and then from the drop-down list, select Internet, click Next, and then click on Add. Under SMTP in the address, put a uh, asterisk, and then click OK. Uh, from there, select Use Domain uh, Name System, click on Next. Uh, that's our domain there, that's fine, click Next. Click New on Outbound, we've got a nice green tick there. Done. Okay, so what we need to do now is just double click on the outbound send connector again. We'll just uh, scrub across over to the general tab. In the fully qualified domain name, you need to put in your A record plus your domain name. So for us, it's wisemail.trainwise.com. Now you may have selected mail.something, whatever it is, whatever your A record is, type that in there with your domain name. Uh, click OK to finish on that. Now select the email address policies tab. Double click on the default policy. Run through that, just click on next, next until you get to this screen. On the email policy, click on add, uh, type in your domain name, in our case it's trainwise.com, so it's your external domain name, not internal domain name. Notice it's put um, percentage m at trainwise.com, we need to set that as reply. So just select that, uh, click on set as reply, it should be bolded now, click on next, 
Next, follow the prompts, two nice green ticks, and that's it, and you're finished, and you're done with organization configuration. See you in server configuration. Okay, in server configuration, we'll look at client access and hub transport. So in client access, there's four tabs. On Outlook Web Access, uh, double click on OA, open up the window, and put your external URL in there. Now, it needs to be uh, HTTPS uh, colon forward slash forward slash, and your fully qualified domain name, in our case it's wisemail.trainwise.com and then you need forward slash OA. Select the authentication tab, click username only, click browse, select your domain, click OK and then you've got trainwise.local which is our domain name so we're authenticating to that. Uh, click OK to there, now move to Exchange Server Active Sync, double click on Microsoft Server Active Sync tab, again put in your external URL click the authentication tab, select basic authentication, accept client certificates. Now later down the track what we're going to do is we're going to do X509 certificates uh, in further training and we install those on the Exchange server and the iPhone and then we'll select require client certificates. Okay, click OK from there, offline address book, uh, double click on OAB, again in the URL field put your external URL and click OK. Uh, in IMAP, uh, IMAP settings uh, on the bindings tab, uh, we've got port 143 for TLS and 993 for SSL. Uh, go to the authentication tab and select secure logon or TLS connection is required. In the X509 certificate name, type in your fully qualified domain name. Ours is wisemail.trainwise.com, which is our certificate name or one of the, our names in our certificate. You don't need the certificate in order for this to work. That's okay. You just enter that in. It'll still work without X509 certificates. Click OK from there. That's about it for client access. Now what we're going to do on the right hand side here is notice there's an option that says enable Outlook anywhere. Click on that, type in your uh, fully qualified domain name, uh, again in our case wisemail.trainwise.com and click enable. So now we've enabled Outlook anywhere. Uh, pop over to uh, hub transport, so select hub transport under server configuration. We want to disable the default, let's just do that, disable default uh, WTM, DWTM, and select client uh, WDWTM. Uh, on your case, that will be your A record. So double click on that receive connector there. Uh, select your fully qualified domain name and type that in again, because that will be incorrect. You need to put your external fully qualified domain name. Uh, for us, wisemail.trainwise.com. Uh, notice there's the ports there, network port 587 for iPhones. Uh, authentication, and in the uh, nothing to change there, but in the permission group, make sure you select anonymous users, and then click OK. And we're done for server configuration. In recipient configuration, we're going to add our user now. You can see there's administrator in that white area under there. Just right click and select new mailbox. Once you've got the new mailbox window up, click next. Select existing user because we've created them earlier. Click the add button and select trainee one. Click OK. Click next. There's T1 there. Click on the browse to give him a mail database. Select the mail database. Click OK. Click next. Click new. And there's our user. Uh, he now has a mail mailbox, click finish and you're done. Go ahead and do the same thing for T2 or trainee 2. Occasionally you'll need to do an IIS reset. The way to do that is open a command prompt window, type in IIS reset space forward slash no force, press enter and that will reset IIS for you.